Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team's currently excavating the Soft Key Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description containing the entire directory structure of this archive. Here's what our diggers have for week 192. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now without further ado, let's get started. First up, Troy Bowman's dug up win games backslash arcade backslash QCW game one. Really don't know what to expect with this one. Um a QCW game one? <laughs> yeah, really don't know what to expect here. Um we got the Borland libraries, we got a file ID, some text files, quatra.exe. The wave mix. Huh. You know, I think I might know what this is. So let me just see here. Let, here here's a, here's the deal. If I open this file id.diz and it says quatra command, this is exactly what I think it is. Yep. <laughs> Uh, Total Action Soft. Yeah, I've played this before. Total Action, Shoot Everything That Moves, Space Adventure. Uh, no, that's not exactly it. As a star pilot, you must defend the Quatra Sector from the enemy mutants, use several high-tech weapons, watch and listen to them explode. <laughs> Great three levels, full screen, digital music and sound effects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this game tries to make itself sound more impressive than it is. The funny thing is, is that for a Windows 3.1 program, it is impressive. As a game, it's not. But you'll see what I mean in a second. Or actually, before we do that, I'm just curious. How much does the um, registered version cost here? So, registration fee for this thing was 15 US dollars. So, and of course, to a Play-Doh Entertainment. Um, $15, eh, that's about borderline what I think it would be worth if I'm remembering this right. But let's see here. Program complete. Enter when ready. I totally forgot about the music and everything. Okay, so... Whoa, and it's playing way too fast. Also, it's not playing very well. Okay, this is more about the speed that it should be going. So yeah, this is basically just a shoot stuff game. I'm not sure exactly what the level of detail is, because I don't remember getting super far in this, because I just kept getting bored, but... Yeah, it's basically just shoot everything that moves. There's some kind of weird, like, pieces coming out of some of the ships. I think that's like alien body parts or something. Oh, we just moved on to level 2. And yeah, it's kind of weird the way damage works in this game. You've got like extra lives, but you kind of don't. <laughs> and yeah, it kind of goes by really quick. <laughs> And yeah, it's using totally stolen sound effects as well. So I'm not actually sure how it advances to the next level. Like, I don't know if it's like time-based or kill-based, but... Oh, apparently it's kill-based, because we're already on to the next level. Although, level 3? Did I, like, warp a level or something? But yeah, you can see the way the extra lives work is that you technically have, like, 9 lives. But each extra life itself is technically composed of 3 extra lives. It's really weird, but, like, I mean, it does the job. Whoops. <laughs> and yeah, sometimes you respawn, like, right in the path of an oncoming attack, and you just kind of die. So yeah, it's skipping me ahead to level 3 for some reason, as opposed to going to level 2. It's very weird. And yeah, by this point, it's nearly impossible to dodge the enemy attacks, because they keep shooting homing shots. Okay, I think we've seen enough of that. So yeah, Quattro Command. It's visually interesting. Like, I mean, the, the person who made this clearly put a lot of effort into the graphics, just not anything else. <laughs> so, yeah, this is not a $15 game. This is more like, I don't know. 
<laughs> it's like borderline ten dollars, but even then, like given when this came out, right? But it's interesting, but it's not really all that fun. Next up, Matthew Belshin has dug up DOS games backslash arcade backslash drags. I mean, it sounds like it might be drug related, but I'm gonna guess it's probably more like drag strip or something. Especially with something like called Drag City there. I got a doc, um, a readme.city file, <laughs> and the executable. Although it's not very big. Hmm. Well, let's edit the readme.cty. Drag City USA. Apparently from April of 1990 by uh, Richard Nicola. I think that's how it's pronounced. As usual, I am not good at pronouncing anything. Anyways, Drag City USA is not a public domain program. It is a shareware program. If you choose to keep Drag City, you are encouraged to send $10 to the author who is in California. Okay, so this is just pretty much ordering info type stuff here. So let's see what the doc file has to say. Your uncle died and has left you as dragster. Uh, <laughs> that doesn't happen often. It's not state of the art, in fact it's a manual three speed job with the engine in front of the driver. You've decided to cast good judgment aside and race it yourself. To drive you need an accelerator and a clutch, if you have a mouse the right button access the accelerator. When pressed you accelerate otherwise you slow down, left button is your clutch, just tap it whenever you want to change gears, and initially to leave the starting line. If you don't use a mouse the spacebar can be used as an accelerator. Also the enter key is the clutch. Okay, it's going to be interesting to see how exactly how exactly this works out, given that it's pretty much just a drag racing game. Like, I mean, part of the reason you don't see a lot of drag racing games is just for the simple fact that there's not much to it. <laughs> you just drive in a straight line as fast as you can, really. But anyways, you want instructions? Uh, it's going to be the same thing? Yeah, it's just the same thing. In fact, that's pretty much just printed the doc file. Okay, so I guess we have to Okay I don't think I did that right, but whatever So we're just accelerating here and that's it. So lapse time, 11.43. Um, I guess we can adjust the gears. Okay, so you're basically you're setting your gear ratios for your low, medium, and high gears. Interesting. Now, I don't know exactly what these numbers mean. So, hmm. I mean, well, I guess we could try something like, oh, I'm just picking here. Let's try this. So get into the staging area again. Oh, wait, wrong button. <laughs> okay, so staging area. And so we're just sort of accelerating and switching gears when it makes sense. And 11.42. Which, is that a new record? <laughs> I, it would have been nice if it would actually like show you the, all your previous times. Although I'm noticing whoever I'm racing against isn't like passing me or anything. Um, <laughs> I don't think that's good for the engine. <laughs> Yep, there goes the engine. Okay, so basically if you're in red line when if you're in red line when you when you pull the clutch you blow the engine. Oh, well, that's interesting. What happened there? Okay, so I think the red light at the bottom there means I actually accidentally like did something to the engine. So I'm wondering like how exactly the red line is working in this game. Like normally in a typical car engine, the red line is the indication as to when the power of the RPMs is going to start wearing down the actual mechanical components of the engine. 
So being in red line, period, is generally a bad thing. But in terms of gaming, like, how is it calculating that? Like, is it like a fixed value that we're not allowed to exceed? Is it something where if we're in the red zone at all for a particular period of time, like, that's what's bad? Like, I don't know. But let's just say we only go up to the six there. And that time we did it in 9.7 seconds. Okay. And yeah, it doesn't look like, regardless of what happens, that the other driver passes you or anything, so the graphics are ultimately very basic in here. In fact, the whole program is very basic when it comes down to it. We've pretty much seen everything it does. So, is it worth $10? Uh, no. <laughs> but... It's still interesting, the level of graphics that went into this, given how basic it is. So, there's that at least. And our last dig for today comes from JP Ronnie. Win games backslash new win two backslash soccer. Taking bets now as to whether this is going to be an action-based game or a simulation-based game. Or neither. It could just be like a whole roster of soccer players or something. Um... That's a lot of INF files. That's kind of weird. And apparently the executable is called Italy, as is the doc file. Well, let's see what we got here. So, welcome to the Italian Football Manager. Your goal in this game is to take charge of a football team in the Italian leagues and manage them to the first place in the first division, starting at the bottom of the fourth division. So to run the game, just type Italy when combined with the main menu. Make your choice, use the cursor keys, press enter, sign a new game, you have to type in your team's name. Okay. Okay, so this very much looks like a management sim as opposed to an actual action game. Just reading through what's in here so far. Although I didn't see anything about registration or anything. Like, is this a freeware game or is this something that you have to pay for? Hmm. Well, let's find out. Italy. This isn't even a Windows game. Just a second. Let me actually run this in a proper... <laughs> set this up properly for running in through DOSBox, because running it from, from my Windows setup is going to look real bad. Okay, we should be good now. So, Italy. Charles Gerber presents Italian Football Manager. So we can start a new game, load a save game, or exit to DOS. Okay then, start a new game. Please give the name of your team. Um, shovelware. Oh. Aw, <laughs> it got, there's just not enough room to put that extra S in. Um, I guess I'll just call it Team Shovelware. Please give the manager name, that'll be me. Please give the name of your stadium. Um, Dig Stadium? Please enter the name of your hometown, or the number of your hometown. That's a lot of choices. Um, let's be from... I have no idea. <laughs> I see Rome in the list, so let's be from Rome. Use up and down keys to select different fields. Press left and right key to change fields. Okay, so you can actually... Oh, that's interesting. We actually get to design our uniform. <laughs> I don't think I've seen a DOS sports game with this feature before. <laughs> This is something you typically see in, like, a modern sports game. Now, mind you, this seems to be more of a managerial-type game, so it's probably pretty limited as to how this is going to be used. We're probably just going to see it, like, just like this, never in any kind of different situations, so... Okay, this is pretty gaudy, so I think we'll go with this. <laughs> Level of difficulty? Definitely easy. So, loading. And now we're in text mode. So, we can view our squad, buy players, sell players, view logs, financial support, general information. So, we have 18 players in our squad, of which we can choose 18 for the next match. Zero international players. Okay. 
um, financial report. So you have 500,000 money available, 900 in fees and 2,000 in other expenses. So it's no big deal there. Oh, and we can actually like improve things here. So I mean, ground maintenance, we're currently paying no money on. So use cursor keys to determine the amount of money you want to be allocated to ground maintenance. Okay. We definitely need to allocate something, right? So let's just do 2,000. Press facilities. Ooh, press facilities are expensive. But we might have to go for that. Um, scoreboard. Ooh, electronic scoreboard is very expensive. Floodlights. Okay, and it seems to be like upgrade based. So when we hit it, it says that the next one that we get is basic, which is 100,000. So we can either build speeds at normal speed or build seats at high speed to increase the stadium capacity. So 1,000 seats would be 70,000, and we get a discount if we build more at a time. Oh, yeah, let's get a youth team going as well, because why not? We should add at least something. I would, I would think that press facilities would probably be a good thing to end, add. So we'll add some press facilities. You know what? Let's actually do um, let's actually do some ground facilities as well. Okay, so let's view our current squad here. So here's the players we have. So we've got a few goalkeepers. Um, forward, striker, wing, midfielder, defender, fullback, sweeper. I like the fact we only have one sweeper and one defender. I mean, it would kind of make sense that we'd want to have, like, we also only have one halfback. Hmm. But you know what? Given the fact that the, for the first couple weeks, we can't really do much to the player situation, we might as well just spend a bunch more on the, um, spend a bunch more on this stuff here. That's actually, let's just go up by... A thousand because I think the medical staff was yeah the medical staff was a little more expensive. Okay, so now let's proceed to next match. Please select your team for the game. Oh, we can actually look up details as well. Okay, definitely want forward, striker, wing, mid midfielder, defender, fullback, sweeper, halfback. Add one more. I guess another wing? Oh wait, two more. Um, another midfielder. So I'm not sure what these numbers mean here, but um, let's just go with it. Make changes? Nope. Press enter to see all the results or any other key to see only the results of your division. Well, let's see them all. So, well, our team's not in this list. Oh, there we are. And we totally lost. <laughs> well, that's not good. <laughs> and apparently we got one yellow card and one red card. Well, that's also not good. <laughs> I guess our team really needs some, um... Really needs some encouragement or something. We did make money on it. We did make money on that, but not a lot. <laughs> At least I think we made money on that. Oh, no wonder we lost. It was the freaking goalkeeper who got red carded. Jeez. Okay, then. So, actually, how the heck does a goalkeeper get red carded? <laughs> that would have to be one heck. One heck of a misplay. Although look at the look at the stats at the bottom there. The this particular goalkeeper had perfectly even stats at three everywhere, but playing in the game actually improved his capabilities. Interesting. Okay, so we need to pick a new goalkeeper. I'm gonna pick this goalkeeper. Um still says average rating 35. Do you wanna make changes? I do still want to make some changes because I do want to see how these players are doing here. Actually, who got the yellow card? Okay, this person, this is the person who got the yellow card. Um, yeah, not 
Not exactly the greatest stats there. Let's replace them with... Yeah, let's replace them with this person. And we got annihilated on this one. Holy jeez, our team sucks. <laughs> we got two yellow cards. The person I substituted in has got a red card. Oh my jeez. I guess this is why I'm not a sports team manager. <laughs> Well, then the fact that I don't have the money. Now we're definitely losing money. <laughs> so, okay, I think we've established that I suck at managing a football team, or a soccer team, if you will. So, yeah, let's just say that this game is probably pretty decent if you know what you're doing, and call it at that. Program complete. Enter window.